Good evening, fellow Bo Bozemanites. I'm honored to be kicking off tonight's Pachachka. Last night I had the honor and the privilege of seeing the other 10 presenters, and you're really in for a treat tonight. Um, so I'm going to talk tonight about a project that uh, is new for me. I've never done something like this before. And so if after watching this you um, have ideas for me, please reach out. I'd be more than wel uh, welcome any suggestions or thoughts that you have to make, help make this um, project a reality. The other thing I wanted to say is that in putting this together, it really made me think of my grandmother. Every time, I, she's not alive anymore, but every time I would see her, the first thing she would say is, you're beautiful, your mother loves you, and she'd slip you a dollar bill. <laughs> <clears throat> and every time you left, she would always say, don't forget, be surprised. Let yourself be surprised. And I don't think I ever understood that until I put this talk together and what happened to me on this experience. All right, before we get into the project, we have to start at the beginning. Very sad beginning for me. Hit it, Bob. A broken relationship, turning the corner into my 40s, and the worst, early stages of male pattern baldness. <laughs> now I'm too poor to get a car to boost my balding ego, so I figured a trip and a long hike would cure my midlife melancholy. And what better, I thought, than Mount Kilimanjaro. A short time later, I'm at a bar in Bozeman with a buddy of mine, telling him proudly of my plan for redemption. He didn't like it. Rob, it's a damn cliche on top of another cliche. Forget Kilimanjaro. If you're going to go on a walkabout in Africa to lick your wounds, go to Uganda and trek the Renzori Mountains. Uganda? Where the heck is Uganda? I asked myself. And the Ruzo, Rezo, what mountains? Who's even heard of those? That night, I consulted Google and placed Uganda on the map. As I did, I asked myself, what did I even know about this country? First thing that popped into my mind, Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker in the movie The Last King of Scotland, playing a Ugandan dictator. From Forrest, I conjured up images of the violent rebel, Joseph Kony and his child soldiers. Needless to say, I wasn't convinced and honestly thought my buddy, who's here tonight, was crazy. But of course, there are the gorillas. Uganda is one of the only three nations in the world where gorillas can be seen in their natural habitats. Now, these are way more convincing. But sadly, that was pretty much the extent of my knowledge of Uganda. And as I thought that night of the possibility of going there, I felt intimidated and afraid. I also felt embarrassed of my own ignorance and my ethnocentrism. As I prepared for bed that night, I knew in my heart that I needed to go to Uganda. I knew there was something else beckoning me, but I just didn't know what it was. Within weeks, I'm on an 18-hour flight to Entebbe, followed by a six-hour car ride across the country, and after just 12 hours landing on the continent, I'm trekking with a group of men I didn't know from Adam. What the heck was I thinking making those plans? I have no idea. By the time I was ready for bed that night at 2,400 meters, John Denver would have been proud for I was feeling some serious Renzori Mountain High. The Renzori Mountain Range, also known as the Mountains of the Moon, or locally the Rainmaker, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Its glaciers are an important source of water for the Nile River, and it's home of the Central Circuit Trail, ranked by National Geographic in 2011 as one of the 15 best treks in the entire world. The Central Circuit Trail is an intensive seven-day hike, and truthfully, it kicked my ass. For five days, I crossed rickety bridges, waded rivers, and mucked my way through marshes, all the while climbing to the base camp at over 14,000 feet. And when I could actually pay attention, I was absorbing some majestic views at every turn. The summit day is all about the glacier. Or as a guy I passed on the trail said, man, that's no glacier. That's the wall from Game of Thrones. <laughs> Suited up with crampons and roped into each other, we picked our way up, ice picked our way up to the top, Margarita Peak, Africa's third highest point at nearly 17,000 feet. But finishing this trek, that was just the beginning. The real story here is the company I trekked with, the Renzori Mountaineering Services. RMS is a co-op that pumps its profits back into the local community, mostly for kids so they can go to school, because in Uganda you have to pay for school, something that's pro prohibited many and hurt literacy levels. From left to right, I want you to meet Alfred, Lazarus, and John, all of whom have agreed to share their images with you tonight. 
These men have not only guided me on this trek, these men changed my life. They educated me about their company and their community and their country. What I found in these men were not just chefs and buddy, budding botanists, but social activists and visionaries. Now I can tell you this, when I boarded that flight to Entebbe, I did wonder if I might get malaria, but I didn't see any of this coming. At one point, Lazarus, who has an eight-year-old daughter, asked me how he might help his child. Now I'm a professor of literacy, and I have one response to any question anyone ever asks me, read. So I said, have him read a lot and start early. He said, but Robert, there are no books. He explained that the only books were in schools and could not leave the buildings. And for adults, books were even more scarce. My hero, Paulo Freire, explains that literacy is not just reading or writing words, but rather an active process that helps shape the world. I shared with these men about Freire, and as we made our way down the mountain, an idea was born, a literacy center in their village. Two months after my departure, these men sent a proposal for such a center and asked if I might help. As an academic, I read a lot of proposals, unfortunately. This one, though, this one blew me away. In their words, the vision for the center is an empowered young generation free from injustices. Needless to say, I was on board. So now what? Well, that's exactly what these men and I are trying to figure out right now. That's what we're in the process of. So far, they've gotten lumber and have begun building bookshelves. And in June, I'll head back to see how we might make this a reality. And who knows, maybe I'll see you there. At this point, I just want to pull back and take a minute to acknowledge the potential kind of problematic nature of a project like this. I'm a white privileged American, and there is a serious legacy of colonialism past and present in Africa. For me, it's been really crucial to check in with these men to make sure this project is driven by their goals and not mine. After Uganda, I did go and trek Kilimanjaro. My buddy was right. There's no comparison. It blows me away that every year 50,000 people try to make it to the top of Kilimanjaro when right next door less than 500 people a year try to make it to Margarita. In the end, the cure for my midlife malaise wasn't to be found on any mountaintop or in any sports car, but in the coming together with people for a common cause. This is John, the architect of this endeavor. And although the audio isn't working here, I'll share with you what he said. My name is John. I'm from Ranjori Mountains in the Raboni Village. Thank you so much. Greetings enjoy to the people in the United States of America. Thank you so much and enjoy your time. Wasinja.